Born June 15, 1859, Arthur Carl Wilhelm Hefner was a pre-World War I scientist in one of Germany's most prosperous scientific periods of study. The 19th century paved the way for developments in psychology, biology, chemistry, but less well-known were the German first in the science of psychopharmacology. Psychopharmacology is the natural bridging between the sciences of psychoactive compounds and medicine. Hefter would be the first to isolate and understand their effects in a systemic way. As well as testing this pure mescaline, a powerful hallucinogenic, on himself. Unlike other scientists, Arthur would dose himself and study the effects firsthand, and in doing so, pave the way for the study of psychoactive clinical effects on the human brain. Peyote cactus grows in the American Southwest. It doesn't have any spines, grows pink flowers, and grows unassuming fruit. But when properly processed, this cactus produces alkaloids that are today regulated by federal law for their effects on the human brain. When made into a tea, the drink contains the strange alkaloids. Shamans were known to drink this tea in Native American rituals. But Arthur wanted to know what exactly was within the cactus that produces such a strange effect. The American pharmaceutical company known as Park Davis readily made peyote samples available to the German toxicologist Louis Lewin for study. Although Lewis successfully identified that alkaloids were indeed responsible for the hallucinations of the cactus, he couldn't identify which of the alkaloids was the psychoactive. He gave his peyote samples to Arthur Hefter because he knew that Arthur had developed a process that could isolate the different alkaloids of the cactus and determine their effects. The year is 1888, and in his home laboratory in Leipzig, Arthur Hefter is hard at work. Now possessing the samples that he needed, Arthur begins his meticulous process to isolate the multiple alkaloids from the mysterious cactus. This process would take nearly nine years, but one by one these alkaloids would be carefully identified, isolated, and tested. He isolated anhalonine, pelatine, used today in hospitals as a hypnotic, lafalfurine, an identifier in prehistoric aquatic flora, and of mescaline. In 1897, after nearly 10 years of careful study, Hefter began his animal testing with these isolated compounds. Working with laboratory frogs, common in Germany at the time, he tested the compounds at first glance. But he saw that the alkaloid substance didn't have any perceivable effect on the frogs. His results were inconclusive, so Arthur followed in the footsteps of previous daring chemists and decided to test the group of alkaloids on himself. Initially, he described his experiences as slowing of the heartbeat. He took note of the dilation of his eyes, and he endured nausea, dizziness, and encountered a powerful headache. In just half an hour, Arthur's ordeal is just beginning, because on the warm July evening, Arthur Hefter dosed himself with 17 grams of pure isolated mescaline and experienced the psychoactive episode. The following is taken from his journal of the event. While reading, green and violet spots appear on the paper. The same occurs when I look up at the bright sky. After shutting the eyes, visual images occur, which are initially pale, but gradually become more clearly defined and brighter. In this particular experiment, landscapes are less frequent and I have predominantly images of kaleidoscopic figures, pattern carpets and cloth, luxurious articles of clothing and architectural scenes. The predominant colors are orange, red, and green, with a little blue and occasionally yellow. On this occasion, images occur in a completely darkened room, while my eyes are open, but they are not as vivid and clear as when I keep my eyes shut. The capacity for visual images lasts in this experiment for an extraordinarily long time. Even the following morning, color spots still appear when I shut my eyes. 
But Hefter survived his ordeal and experienced the proof of successfully isolating the pharmacological active ingredient in the peyote cactus. The very alkaloid responsible for the hallucinations, mescaline. Later, these findings would be expounded upon in 1918, where it could aid in the understanding of the clinical effects of mescaline on the human brain. Around this same time, the Native American church would be formed, where the practices of peyotism would be considered legalized by the U.S. Congressional Legislative Act. Mescaline is identified now as a simple alkaloid compound which is related to ephedrine as well as other psychoactive compounds, compounds such as ecstasy but is actually more commonly seen in chemical variations which lead to synthesized decongestants appetite depressants, and much more. Thus, Hefter was the first scientist to study systematically a naturally occurring psychedelic material, and was certainly a chemist ahead of his time. His experiment, 50 years before Albert Hoffman would even study the effects of LSD, and Hefter's notes are still considered one of the best pharmacological works in the turn of the century. The prestige earned by Arthur's isolation processes allowed him to rise to positions of state within the German government, continuing his research in the fields of human health. After his experience with the mescaline, Arthur's outlook on his life improved. He describes his experience as having fresh energy and found himself in a supportive environment with numerous interested students and like-minded colleagues. His task at the German capital was to modernize the institute and change the direction of study. He created a department for immunization research and experimental therapies. Because of his accomplishments, the Hefter Research Institute would be named after Arthur, founded in 1993 in New Mexico. The HRI is a privately funded enterprise with the focus of studying the psychoactive substances such as LSD, DMT, MDMA, and of course mescaline, continuing on the research of the 19th century psychopharmacists like Arthur Hefter. Hefter's work bridged the gap between the medical field and sciences of chemistry, and his processes are still used to this day. Unfortunately, with the rising conflicts of World War I, Arthur was not able to live to see his handbook of experimental pharmacology to completion, he suffered an arterial disease in his brain and would pass away. But it was because of his supportive colleagues who collected Hefter's notes after his passing and after the Great War and helped see his book to completion. Perhaps not spoken highly enough, this book captured the understanding of pharmacology up to that time and was a critical milestone in defining the science of pharmacology. Arthur Carl Wilhelm Hefter was a brave chemist, and a medical doctor who took it upon himself to experience the peyote alkaloids in his own body, and he submitted that he didn't know if the study provided any therapeutic or medical use, but that it did give an effect like nothing he's tried before. He risked poisoning and overdosing, but without his meticulous study to these naturally occurring substances and his sheer determination, we would know little about this unassuming cactus that the Native Americans used to explore their minds. <laughs>